Productions or the Mr. Unnat Shekhar, promoter and managing director of Galaxy Surfactants Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you. As we begin this first con call of financial year 2021, I do hope and trust that you and your families are safe, sound and healthy. The famous author Roy T. Bennett has said, you learn something valuable from all the significant events and people, but never touch your true potential until you challenge yourself to go beyond the imposed limitations. The quarter gone by has been just that. Challenges kept emerging from all ends. The situation kept changing daily, but what remained constant in this dynamic and uncertain environment was our determination, focus and vigor to stand up to the challenge and discover our true potential. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a challenging yet satisfying quarter for us. I would like to acknowledge our team for having stood up to this challenge despite the numerous headwinds and uncertainties that marred the quarter. The relentless determination and unmatched focus demonstrated by Galaxy family ensured that we not only face these uncertainties with confidence, but also emerge stronger. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge all our stakeholders who have ably supported and equipped us to fight this battle with sheer confidence. Their support has been significant. The quarter one of this financial year 2021 has been a unique quarter in many ways. The unfortunate incident at our M3 unit at Tarapur and the sudden imposition of lockdown one and two impacted the supply side of the business. Be it in terms of people, production or operations, business in India and USA slowed down in April and the first half of May. But things are getting back to normalcy, though the situation is changing dynamically. Momentum picked up in June and we believe this momentum should continue into the next quarter. But the key here will be how the supply side factors pan out. Demand visibility for our performance effectiveness which grew at 7.8% in volume terms for this quarter, driven by the healthy 10.2% growth registered by the Amet market remains robust. No shutdown in Egypt meant growth momentum continued from quarter four FY 1920 to quarter one FY 2021. The specialty care products due to the cutback in discretionary consumption and overall slowdown in the developed markets saw a decline of 26.2%. We believe this is a temporary short-term blip, and with the revival of the consumption cycle, we do see normalcy returning in the coming months. India business, though declined by 2.3%, a good monsoon followed by pickup in rural consumption, along with a growing awareness for hygiene and cleanliness, has the potential to result in an improved performance going ahead. The challenge, though, will be the potential impact on operations due to the intermittent lockdowns, variability of restrictions, and the challenges on account of rising COVID cases. This can delay the recovery. Numerically, the revenues for June constituted for 40% of the total group revenues for the quarter gone by. While the mix gravitated towards performance of factors, the EBITDA per metric ton remained resilient at 17,561 per metric ton, as against 17,779 per metric ton reported in Q1 FY20. Ladies and gentlemen, given the headwinds, agility and adaptability combined with customer centricity will hold the key. With the resilience demonstrated by our business and people over the years, we remain confident of winning together once again. On that note, I wish your families and you good health and strength to cope with this new normal and emerge stronger. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start the Q&A session, I would like to make a statement. 
This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may press star and 1. First question is from the line of Mike Sell from Alquiry. Please go ahead. Thank you. Could you please give us some more uh, colour on the unfortunate accident? What actually caused it? Um, you have some of the most stringent procedures in terms of safety, and this is your first major accident for many years. Yeah. So I'm slightly uh, confused at, at what went wrong and how you can ensure that it doesn't ever happen again. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the, the description of the accident uh, is uh, that there was a, uh, an intermediate vessel inside the plant and uh, that, uh, you, know, this, you know, there was a blast in that particular tank which resulted in the death of three people. Now, uh, there, 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 is, there has been a, what is called, we have various, what is called alarm systems. So this particular, uh, 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 an alarm went off, and uh, what is uh, required uh, in the emergency response is that people who are not in that particular plant, uh, except the supervisor of that particular plant, are supposed to move away and come, come to the emergency response area. However, I think, uh, you know, two people out of the three, uh, I think uh, out of uh, maybe enthusiasm, uh, chose to remain with the supervisor and, or maybe out of curiosity, went over to that particular place where they were not supposed to be there. Now, the supervisor went there and uh, I think uh, in that particular heat of the movement, uh, he, he closed a particular valve which was not supposed to be closed, which aggravated the situation. I think uh, uh, I think it only points out to possibly uh, uh, a small, uh, what I call, uh, uh, confusion in the mind at that particular point of time to be not, you know, to not to be able to what is called very think clearly and do what needs to be done. And I think that particular uh, action, uh, without a full thinking, resulted in a, uh, an explosion or a blast which happened. And uh, this resulted in, a, in, a, in the death of all these uh, three people, out of which two people uh, had an instant uh, death and then one on the way to the hospital. Now, uh, subsequent to that, very obviously, we, uh, we, we, when we reflected on that, possibly we said, are we... Uh, how, do we have distance to cover with respect to the emergency response uh, uh, training uh, as far as our people, is, people are concerned, one. And uh, number two, uh, we, we, what we did was uh, we uh, created a task force to go through the entire uh, factory, equipment by equipment, uh, process by process, plant by plant, and uh, uh, once uh, we, we uh, reconstructed the particular uh, you know, place, every single product had to go through this, what we call PSSR, pre-startup safety review, after having uh, restored the safety, require, you know, safety aspects of every single uh, unit. Then only we started it. I think the starting of this particular plant happened only uh, in late June, uh, as far as this plant is concerned. Now the plant is, of course, uh, you know, running. And uh, this is, as, as you rightly said, uh, this is uh, a big, big setback as far as our safety record is concerned. 
over the last 40 years uh, and uh, uh, it has uh, it has it has brought in a deep uh, reflection into ourselves looking into ourselves and then questioning and examining every single facet as far as our plant and process is concerned thank you and a quick follow up question yeah. um can you confirm that all your plants are now uh, fully operational as in there's no lasting damage uh, from from this and secondly uh, and that includes any regulatory issues and secondly have any of your customers who are very big on ESG uh, curtailed their business with you as a result of this problem uh, can you can you repeat uh, with respect to the customers what do you ask um, have any customers uh, ended their relationship or reduced no. their relationship no, due no. to the accident? No, no. I think uh, we informed all of our customers as soon as the uh, incident happened. We, you know, uh, fully, uh, uh, you know, what's called kept them updated with respect to whatever has happened. Uh, all our plans are as of today running. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of their uh, uh, the only only bottleneck is with respect to our uh, internal uh, uh, situations with respect to sickness of people you know what we do is we need to plan almost on a, a daily basis uh, so it's it's very very difficult to plan even uh, uh, you know for for three days uh, because this this the covid sickness uh, uh, seems to impact us in uh, in very uncertain ways. Yeah. I understand. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. You, Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from Nilesh from HTC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. My question, yeah, my question is related to per unit EBITDA margin, sir. Uh, sequentially, if you look at, uh, as well as uh, YOI, the company is able to maintain per unit EBITDA uh, at above 17,000. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. May I request to speak a little louder, please? Yeah, sure. So my question is related to per unit EBITDA margin. Mm -hmm. If you look at, uh, if I look at uh, sequentially as well as YOI, the company is able to maintain per unit EBITDA uh, about seventeen thousand five hundred per ton. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 if I look at the uh, volume mix in the current quarter, particularly, it is mm -hmm. tilted more towards traditionally what we call as a low margin performance surfactants. Uh, given the um, low volume from uh, specialty uh, care, specialty care, but despite of that, the company able to maintain per unit EBITDA margin sequentially as well as YOY. So, which implies that there is a change in customer mix. So, can you tell us what was the customer mix in one two, and uh, also uh, throw some light on the sustainability of it in the near term? Yeah. Yeah. So, Natarajan here, I'll take this question. See, first of all, I would like to uh, correct your this thing in terms of, you know, uh, that all performance surfactants are low uh, margin products. See, the performance surfactants, uh, the way we have to manage is in terms of the uh, raw material, uh, you know, uh, risk that you manage, the way that you manage that also is critical, and the way that you are able to uh, you know, uh, understand the market situation and able to take advantage of the geographical presence spread that we have in terms of managing the customer as well as the geographical portfolio, okay, uh, of, for these products. So what, to answer your question, whether, uh, you know, going forward, okay, this would be sustainable, I would like to be a little bit guarded because we do see uh, the sort of uptick that is happening in the performance effectance, okay, although we uh, would, uh, we are, we want to be cautiously optimistic on that front, and uh, we would like to be still sticking to this thing in terms of, you know, overall uh, EBITDA margins being in the range of 15 to 17,000 uh, per metric ton. That's what I would like to say. Uh, uh, to answer your question further, uh, I think uh, the last quarter there has been uh, the, the sales mix has been more towards uh, T1 customers because uh, T3 customers uh, uh, face more disruptions compared to the uh, 
T1 uh, customers. And uh, uh, I think we have repeated this many times. Uh, uh, and still this question comes up, you know, where, where the perception seems to be that uh, the performance surfactants are, you know, low margin products. This is not so. We have uh, classified performance surfactants as performance surfactants only because they are all they are dependent on the raw material lauryl alcohol okay and uh, since the lauryl uh, alcohol uh, as a as a feedstock is quite volatile in terms of uh, its uh, you know price uh, over uh, periods of time we we it, it, you know the entire business uh, demands that we manage the risk of raw materials and that's the reason why we have classified them as performance surfactants the only you know uh, as I said, the only common thing of this performance of energy is large alcohol is its raw material. Rinsing is the only benefit. Huh? Rinsing benefit. Yeah. Rinsing is the only benefit. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thanks. And so my second question, if you could able to give the geographical uh, revenue breakup in terms of uh, percentage. Approximately, I'll tell you. Hmm. It was... Uh, uh, I think Ahmed was 42, India was 37, and rest of the world was 20. Okay, thanks. That's all for mine. Thank you, sir. Oh. Thank you very much. Next question is from Anupam Tiwari from Access Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, sir, to, just to understand it a little better, is there any uh, one-off kind of traction or temporary traction you that you are uh, expecting in uh, emit or you think this demand is sustainable uh, see as far as emit is concerned see if you remember correctly about three years back uh, you know uh, when when the devaluation happened in uh, egypt as a country there was a what's the contraction of the market one and there was also uh, a shift uh, between T1 and T3 customers, uh, I mean T3 customers at that particular point of time in the local Egyptian uh, market. However, over a period of time, the T1, uh, our T1 customers or the T1 customers there, T1 players there, have slowly regained their position and, and particularly their share. And the market has also, you know, uh, come, up, come back to come back come back to its own. So what we would say is that that entire three-year period uh, was was a, was a uh, a, a slow period for Egypt, and then Egypt has uh, suddenly come back to normalcy now. So, so uh, there so is nothing. The market is concerned, uh, as we have said, uh, uh, whatever uh, we are seeing now, we expect this uh, particular uh, uh, sort of position uh, or or the or the market uh, position to continue. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And in case of rest of the world, um, uh, uh, can you comment uh, uh, anything on when you see demand recovering? What, what is the trend that you are getting? Let us let us let us say that you know this is a highly uncertain time. I think uh, we can't even uh, see what will we can't even predict what will happen the next day, because and and if you see the entire uh, except a few countries in the world, almost all the countries are still in the grip of grip of COVID. Okay, so we are we are still in a very very fluid uh, situation. So, but uh, as uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the speech, uh, for us we take every day as it uh, comes and fight our best. Mm -hmm. is, is this uh, decline in ROW volume is uh, due to the fact that our plant was not operating, and uh, maybe client has to shift to somebody else for immediate supply? You know, as I said, in, see if you look at uh, the last uh, quarter. Uh, the April month, uh, you know, virtually uh, uh, the entire country was at a, uh, you know, standstill, okay. Now, with the last at our factory did is suddenly impact uh, us, but slowly we are now uh, regaining our position with our customers. Okay, so it, it, this volume decline is not having any structural impact because of our uh, issue in the plant. It's purely a demand issue. Oh, is that, no, 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 no. Uh, fact, uh, I should say that uh, uh, I think uh, you all will be quite uh, pleased to know that we are surrounded by demand, okay, as far as uh, this industry is concerned. 
uh, what has happened is that uh, uh, the people's habits with respect to their personal hygiene and cleanliness and home hygiene and fabric hygiene has heightened during this particular period of time. So across the world, not just in India, uh, I think demand is extremely what is called buoyant and robust. What is uh, now determining our business will be how we are able to you know respond consistently and continuously with uh, with what is called zero disruptions. But the fact is that there is there is quite a bit of disruption. Uh, you know, uh, with respect to our people uh, getting getting sick, so people get sick, or their neighbors get sick, as a result, or uh, their society gets sick as a result of it. They get quarantined, and they are unable to. For your information, I think we have estimated that roughly 20 to 25 percent of our people force is unavailable at any point of time, and this has been the case for the last now four and a half months or so. So we do hope that you know this uh, number will you know uh, reduce to zero in the coming months i think and that can uh, enable us to respond better with respect to the demand requirements uh, that the market imposes on us okay okay great sir and sir there is no uh, extraordinary pricing benefit that you have got in this quarter right yes, because of early supply or emergency supply so it is all uh, normal pricing behavior that you have seen uh, normal pricing practices as yeah, used to be earlier. We have okay. always said we have always said that we have really, really long-term relationship with our customers. Okay, the entire uh, business over the last 40 years has been built on strong and abiding relationship with our customers. So there is always predictability and consistency that we have to promise with respect to our 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 dealings and our association sorry to interrupt you, sir i'll request you to come back in the question queue for a follow up question i request all the participants please restrict to two question per participant if time permit please come back in the question queue for a follow up question next question is from sanjay chain from icici securities please go ahead Thanks for the opportunity and uh, good afternoon, everybody. A couple of questions uh, from my side. Uh, first on the realization, uh, if I look at the realization for this quarter, uh, the realization for performance chemical was uh, like 30% higher than the specialty. I know that we don't have any correlation in the realization, but just if you can provide some color on the, on the product mix on the specialty side and uh, should we see this uh, realization also catching up as we see volumes come back in the specialty side? That's my first question. Yeah, Sanjay. So I'll take this question, Natarajan here. So first of all, as we explained, I think when uh, uh, the initial uh, uh, thing on this in terms of uh, uh, when the same question was asked, what I said was, with the specialty momentum picking up, okay, which Shaker explained is more in terms of how we are able to manage the operations and the supply side, uh, we do expect that things would start improving in terms of the realization. But whatever we have seen in terms of this particular quarter has been a combination of various factors in terms of the way we have been able to manage risk on the raw material front and in terms of the way that we are able to manage the geography and the customer uh, profile mix. Okay. So as I said, we are cautiously optimistic that we will be able to maintain this particular trend. What is critical is in terms of how we are able to respond in a very predictable way with regard to the operations in the supply side, which is unfortunately impacted in terms of the COVID sickness that we are having with, uh, in terms of our people. That's the only thing. Uh, uh, let me proactively answer uh, the group's questions. I'm sure I think all of you are anxious with respect to the specialty care products. See, as I mentioned in the previous quarter, this industry is driven by consumer needs and wants. And for consumers, uh, the various, uh, you know, what's called uh, top of the line uh, priorities are, one is protection and safety, which I said is driving the move towards non-toxic, you know, preservation. The second is mildness, which is driving, uh, you know, the mild uh, surfactants. The third is, you know, sustainability. Now, all these are very, very critical and important, and the last is, of course, sensory. 
So the basic structure or movement of the industry with respect to the consumer minds is not at all interrupted. What is important is the priority has changed in in this you know in this uh, uh, time where the customers are remaining at home. So what they are more bothered about is not beauty as of today, okay? Because they are all inside their houses. They are more bothered about personal cleanliness, personal hygiene, and to protect themselves further. So which is what is happening now. So there is more of people are cleaning themselves and cleaning their homes, cleaning their uh, uh, dishes or cleaning their uh, fabrics, cleaning their floors much, much uh, more frequently than what they have been uh, uh, used to before one. And we do believe, and as you, have, you would have listened to con calls of all our customers also, we do believe that this habit will stick. In the sense that once they are into this particular habit, this habit will stick. Uh, so you, have, you are seeing some uh, significant growth as far as hand wash is concerned. Okay. Now the growth will taper down over, a, uh, I mean, whatever, uh, uh, you know, some of our customers have mentioned that their uh, uh, sales of hand wash has multiplied by three times. Of course, they don't expect this, uh, uh, you know, momentum to maintain once normalcy comes in, but they are certainly sure that the market will expand by not less than two times, uh, one, you know, even after this uh, COVID uh, fear goes away. So what is, what, is, what is to be understood is that uh, whatever we are seeing uh, uh, with respect to specialty care products is entirely due to one, a lot of disruption caused by uh, uh, COVID in all the countries, one, and uh, number two, a shift in priorities uh, in, in the short term. Got it. Got it. <clears throat> but one related question on the specialty again, sorry to touch it upon again. Uh, how are we seeing this with the opening up of the economy now that we are uh, the specialty is generally more dependent on us and europe and the, the economy is opening up much faster than india have we seen any sign of revival there at least uh, 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 has the order or the inquiry inflow increased on the specialty yeah, yeah. side yeah 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 certainly 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 i mean uh, they we, we see the the interest on the specialty remains See, a lot of our customers have also lost production, okay, because of COVID. Okay, as I as I told you, the demand is is demand as a as a parameter is pretty robust. Got so when you talk about the decline in the uh, last quarter, it is also not just entirely due to demand; it is also partly due to us, where we have not been able to just say respond to full summary. And which is what I mentioned right at the beginning, that uh, the, the uh, blast at the M3 unit also was one of the uh, you know, reasons. Apart from the fact lockdown was uh, uh, also uh, lockdown one and two, or, and furthermore the the, the sickness uh, and absenteeism, which is uh, you know which which has happened because of this pandemic, all uh, supply side also has been a cause of this particular decline in terms of specialty. So just to clarify, now that Tara, yeah, just I will complete this and back and question give for a follow up question. Anyone? Next question is from Videsh Gupta, Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Hi sir, uh, thanks for taking my question. It's just one. Uh, when you say that you, your bid up a ton range is 15 to 17 k, yeah. and uh, last I mean I think it will be around 17 and a half. Right. So, do you, would you like to revise up the guidance uh, from 15, 17k to let's say? So we would still maintain. We will still maintain whatever we have talked about before. Okay, it will okay. still be that 15 to 17,000. So then, like, is it largely because of the lower palm oil prices in the last two three quarters that you are exceeding 17, or is it products mix, or is it something else? We have said multiple times that we don't play on our raw materials. Okay. We always, let us say, we have an opportunity to pass it on, and uh, that's the reason. Because because if uh, we are playing on our raw materials, possibly then the range that we would have talked about will be some, uh, say, 13 to 20. So we have we have mentioned 15 to 17. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from Bharat Singh from Quest Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Sir, on this specialty care side, just one 
what question is on this pressure our volume decline is 26% whereas value decline is 39% so can just can you explain is there any product mix change or how or geography change has really played out this that is one question and second question sir related to our lot of I mean performance uh, product where we have to go and uh, work with the customer for application and then develop the new application so is there any setback because of the covid because of non traveling and all and third is on the capex side that we if you can give some color okay so i'll take the first question that was in here i'll yeah. i'll answer the first question so first is on the the reason is because what got impacted in terms of the uh, demand side also was the high end uh, you know categories in terms of beauty uh, products so obviously you know the uh, uh, volume reduction okay was lower than the uh, revenue reduction because you know the products that got in the mix impacted within specialty that is that explains as to why the revenue impact was more than the volume impact okay coming to your second question in terms of our engagement okay with our uh, uh, customers given the situation not traveling we are uh, right from day one we have used technology to ensure that we are connected virtually with all our customers including the uh, development uh, this innovation team you know, so that you know and we see good amount of traction happening and we have got adjusted to this new uh, norm of working and uh, doing meetings virtually okay so the customer connect has only got enhanced okay and the third one is, uh, i think uh, third one you asked in terms of uh, i forgot that question what was capex the capex i mean and, uh, over that we were looking for a large amount of capex over in a yeah, all of your so they all because of the uh, covid situation with uh, the labor availability uh, the implementation time has got pushed by about 6 months so we could have we should have probably been uh, commissioning it in the uh, by october this year we will get on to april next year so will that affect our supply chain i mean again i mean if demand revives and supply will be a constraint in that case yes certainly yes because whatever plans we had had obviously it has got pushed by 6 months because of covid okay. so it is going to result in some disruption yes okay so currently sir what capacity are we operating i i'll tell you what uh, i i was mentioning yesterday see our capacity utilization in terms of number is 57.6 but for your benefit let me say if the effectiveness quotient for all of us i was mentioning yesterday would be around 60 to 65% i think if the sickness were not there and assume that you know if everything was let us say as before normal pre covid if we take that as 100 okay uh, i think again said we are today at 60 to 65 so for various reasons the effectiveness quotient is getting impacted okay that is a, a, a ballpark number okay am i am i conveying am i reaching you sir thank you very much Next question is from Rohit Nagaraj from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity, uh, sir. Uh, you have talked about the supply side challenges in terms of uh, manpower. Uh, what were the other challenges uh, that you have faced? Uh, was it because of uh, maybe raw material availability, uh, exports from uh, you know uh, India to other geographies, and how? have you rectified them in the current scenario yeah so i had uh, explained this so initially if you look at uh, from uh, since the lockdown was announced on march 23 till almost end of april the issue was in terms of ability to clear the material from the port okay the local transportation everything had got impacted it started reviving uh, post uh, after lockdown uh, from lockdown 2 okay when it was announced and post may 15 all this started settling down okay and the in any case during that time people availability was any reduced because the government had put restriction in terms of how much uh, uh, can be this sort of number of people you can have at a plant in terms of operating ensuring social distancing now uh, once then we started operating well okay from the month of june okay but then uh, we realized towards end of june that uh, with the lock uh, unlocked on one that was announced okay people started uh, falling sick because the amount of uh, moving around increased and although there is no restriction in terms of lockdown now the restriction is happening in terms of people availability because they are falling sick or we are taking uh, 
cautious action in terms of ensuring that people are quarantined even if they report a normal fever. Okay, so that is impacting effectiveness as of now. But we are seeing as how best we are able to manage with these given constraints. Okay, in a very very uh, uh, what do you say uh, in a uh, uh, innovative way. So that's what we are doing to ensure that the operations uh, impact is uh, restricted to the least. Okay. So we have been able to mitigate almost all because our team has been constantly ensuring that we are able to ensure that we have our material moving out pretty uh, properly, getting the planning rejigged almost uh, every third day okay, to ensure that we are able to service our customers well. The only challenge we see as of today is the uh, rising COVID cases. So we need to be a little bit more cautious because for us the priority is our health and safety of our people. That's important. Okay, so that is what is the only constraint we see today. Uh, right, sir. So, so uh, due to the supply side constraint, uh, the amount of revenue lost is uh, permanent in nature for this financial year, or part of it can be re recouped in subsequent quarters. So, we have the ability to recoup. It's only that the you know we would expect the consumer demand. See, what demand was lost in the first quarter? If it comes back in terms of consumer demand, that's what will flow back. So what we need to be very, uh, this thing of a consumer demand remains intact. So they start buying more in the coming months, which means the demand for our products will go up. And we are uh, pretty well positioned in terms of responding to that. Okay, the only challenge being if the number of cases continue to be the way they are, then our people availability will be a question and we will ensure that, uh, we need to ensure that, you know, that is properly taken care of. Otherwise, if the demand comes back, we are well positioned. Everything remaining same to be able to respond to that, and in that case, yes, we can we can uh, start recouping. Uh, if not everything, at least a portion of what you have lost in the first quarter. Thank you very much. A request to all the participants: please restrict to one question per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. Next participant is Dhruv M from HDFC Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, if I look at the realization for a performance segment, uh, performance affecting segment, uh, it has increased about 3 odd percent, YY basis. And uh, the the number that you have given for fatty alcohol prices uh, in your presentation, it seems it has declined by about 6 percent. So, on a 6 percent decline, our realization has increased by about 3 percent. Uh, uh, I understand raw materials pass through. So, is it fair to assume this is largely due to a mix? And if you can give some comment on is this mix because of the post COVID situation and can this continue? And coming from because if this continues, I would believe that the, as the speciality recovers, we could see probably better numbers as we move ahead. So, just some thoughts there. See, there has been a, a shift with respect to the mix, uh, uh, you know, in this quarter. But uh, as we have always mentioned, you can, uh, we can, we would always strive. And it will remain this particular mix of what is called 60 to 65 of performance and uh, 30 to 35 of speciality will always remain. Okay. So, sorry, sir. Within, I was mentioning within the performance because the realization has increased despite the fall in raw material. So, on that basis, within the performance, is the shift changed for uh, something better? And can this continue? Because, yeah, within, the, within the performance, I think uh, there are uh, shift changes, but that would be temporary. That would be temporary. Okay. So this should normalize. Uh, okay. Got it. I think uh, we we need to you see. We need, obviously we should not take this quarter as the as the standard at all. Okay. Mm. Uh, the uh, the uh, I think obviously I think as long as COVID remains in the world, uh, I think this particular quarter uh, uh, will be the standard for the subsequent quarters, but not over the long term. Once COVID stops, everything will come back to normal. Yeah. Okay. So we, I think it will be. It will not be proper to extrapolate from whatever has happened in this last quarter. Okay? Thank you very much. Next question is from Rohan Gupta from Edelweiss Financial Service. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon and Congress on a good set of numbers despite challenges of COVID. Yeah. Uh, first is on the so clarity on the other expenses. So, uh, it has come down significantly from the previous quarter, I mean Q4 and uh, also from the last year. So, uh, I understand that one may be the travel related expenses, but is there any significant uh, cost savings we have done which is likely to continue? Uh, 
Yeah, one Physically, the reduction is on account of three count. One is power and fuel, where actually it is affected by volumes, right? Okay. Yeah, volumes are, yeah. yeah right. Second is administrative, and the third is repairs, which is essentially the availability of the people and the... Yeah, yeah. These are the three factors, okay? okay. So, I think uh, whatever expenses that you have seen, you know, reduced, is only because of what one, what one would expect because of COVID. Yes, your travel has been... Uh, very obviously, travel, exhibitions, travel, travel, CSR. Uh, see, I mean, all these things have come down. All these, yeah, administration, yeah. Our uh, yeah. So, second question is, second question is on our customer mix from. Uh, in the current scenario, as you also mentioned, that we have seen shifts from T3 customers to Tier One. Yeah. Uh, that is also uh, visible in the current scenario, but. Uh, these are the T3 customers who used to give us a high margin and because we were giving them a complete service and more value added products. Yeah. So how do you see that the current scenario uh, has panned out because we have not seen that any such impact on our margin. So uh, despite T3 customers concentration coming down. So just wanted to understand a little bit more explanation uh, towards this and how you see this trend uh, going forward. See, uh, again, I say, as, as I said, if you if you look at all the previous quarters, see we were wanting to have our T1 customers around 50 to 55, okay, and our T3 used to be something like uh, around 35 or so, and balance used to be T2, okay. So this is what we would want to have over the long uh, term. See, uh, we we you know in 2018 itself. We had mentioned that our strategy will be on the pillars of growing both on performance effectiveness as well as speciality ingredients. Then, number two, growing both in emerging markets as well as developed markets. Number three, increasing the share of valid with all our customers. Number four, continue to uh, you know innovate uh, products for our uh, customers and create value for them. Number five. Uh, have uh, a broad basing of our customers in T1, T2, and T3 across uh, various uh, geographies. And number six, focus on operational excellence. These continue to our, be our mantra, okay, as far as Galaxy is concerned. And so whatever happened in the first quarter in terms of the change in the uh, profile mix, okay, is essentially mean because I think the Tier 1 and Tier 2 customers were actually uh, able to come back fast, okay, in terms of operations despite the lockdown, whereas Tier 3 customers were finding it difficult. So what we see is that all the Tier 3 customers from June have started their operations, okay. So we do see that that this particular thing was uh, more not by design but by default because of the situation that was there, okay. So uh, we expect all the Tier 3 customers to come back. Okay, well, because all of them have started operations. Thank you very much. A request to all the participants, please restrict to one question per participant. Next question is from Lakshmi Narayanan from ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, if you look at your uh, volume mix, uh, uh, India, MS, and the uh, rest of the world, right? Uh, what has been the volume mix for FI20? And uh, uh, in addition to these external reasons like COVID, do you actually uh, see a, any stress in a particular geography or a particular customer of yours where there is a pullback uh, uh, from the earlier committed volumes, which is which is quite visible and which you think would be the big risk factor in addition to the COVID thing which you actually mentioned? Uh Frankly, no. See, whatever uh, has happened, as I said, please do not come to any derivations uh, uh, as far as this uh, first quarter is uh, concerned. See, we are, as I said, all of us are trying to plan for uh, uh, months ahead, but we're living by the day. I mean, and, and as I was again saying, our uh, uh, mood swings, you know, from uh, extreme optimism to sometimes extreme pessimism, depending on the internal situations, okay? So it is nothing to do with uh, externally. Externally, the demand is pretty, pretty robust. There's no structural, major structural change has been seen at all. There has been redefinition of priorities by individual customers in this particular period of time. As I said, they are more focusing on cleaning, personal hygiene, and they are all living at home. Everybody is operating for, you know, living only in home. They are not even going outside. So, uh, uh, so in that particular context, there is a small uh, uh, reduction with respect to their focus on beauty. 
okay but all of us know that you know this will remain not remain permanent this will come back once the situation regularizes so we would we would uh, continue to uh, uh, say whether it is our uh, shift you know the the uh, mix between performance or uh, speciality will continue to remain the same our geographical mix also will more or less remain the same uh, and uh, uh, and and that's the that's the reason why i say always said you know we are building our uh, uh, capex you know our capex or building capacities in anticipation of let us say what we see uh, you know going forward uh, what is what is significant uh, as i uh, was as happened which is what we have wished all along is that uh, people have you know in, in a way realized the need for cleanliness even much much more uh, uh, possibly it was there in their consciousness but it has got deeply embedded now in this uh, covid situation which is which is good uh, for this uh, for people in terms of their health and for this industry in the long run thank you very much next question is from abhilasha satale from dalaran bocha please go ahead Yeah. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, so, I, uh, as you mentioned, that some of our clients have, uh, you know, are uh, seeing very good growth in their uh, health and hygiene products. Mm. Uh, so, uh, are we also seeing that kind of buoyancy in our orders uh, picking up and all uh, for our performance surpluses? Like, you know, as uh, you said that you know some of the hand wash uh, just can't we have posted three times growth in their. a uh, hand wash seal seals and all so in performance aspect and how much is going towards these products and are we seeing that kind of buoyancy in our order book because of the current situation yes yes we uh, i didn't mention that and uh, that is partly the reason why uh, your company has performed the way it has performed in the last uh, quarter okay so but i uh, as you always say the ca- the caveat is that you know we should be able to be able to what is called respond okay so uh, that is where uh, there is a what is called a, a bit of cautiousness that we that we are expressing so let us see as it goes so i think when we meet uh, uh, you know three months uh, hence i think we will have possibly uh, uh, some more interesting stories to share thank you i request all the participants please restrict to one question per participant next question is from diral shah from philip capital please go ahead yeah good afternoon sir and thanks for the opportunity uh, sir i have two questions basically sir in our performance perfect and basket so what percentage of product is of high margin in nature we have more than 40 ka product you know wherein realization is higher than the average basket realization no we don't uh, you know share uh, those information what is important is that uh, our uh, in terms of volume mix Uh, 60 to 65% of our uh, uh, you know uh, is 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 performance and the, the you know 30 to 35 uh, speciality okay and so uh, one last question sir as you mentioned earlier regarding uh, you know cost saving in the other expense category so what percentage of cost will again bounce back with the improvement in performance and what will not See, all the administrative expenses which are currently affected by physical restrictions right and volume yeah. being lower will bounce back we will bounce back it is only disruption related na no? so all these are disruption related this reduction in expenses is uh, disruption related and once the disruption uh, ceases i think everything will uh, res- get restored back even business will bounce back and the expenses yeah. will also yeah 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 okay so this is one of the nature yeah uh, yeah yeah okay okay thank you sir and all the best yeah thank you thank you very much next participant is now bhardwaj from anand rati please go ahead uh thank you for taking my question and congratulations on a great set of numbers sir mm-hmm. sir uh, i had a short question trying to understand your uh, client mix when we say that you know we had incremental orders from t1 customers uh, my belief was that we usually have long term contracts with them so is it uh, Uh, in the same product line or even their orders were more opportunistic and in different product lines i think uh, the orders were from our uh, you know performance surfactants because as you know the performance surfactants find uh, application in a variety of categories including hair care including uh, hand i you know hand wash including fabric wash 
etc etc so uh, i think our performance surfactants have a wide uh, application in various categories of personal home care products okay so uh, so so the point being that it was beyond their uh, current uh, product line that they were acquiring from from you earlier before this see if you see there you know as a, as a, as we as i mentioned there uh, egypt has only shown growth in volume see compared to uh, uh, fy20 quarter of fy20 as matter of our volume has been lesser in india okay so it, it is you it does not seen a jump in terms of volumes okay so uh, yeah only only your uh, uh, only your egypt volumes have increased otherwise uh, if you see india uh, we have we have declined in this first quarter uh, the, the and uh, as i as i always say, I, as i also said that we have not been able to fully respond to our customers in this particular uh, quarter primarily because uh, of lockdown okay now the see the consumer requirements have remained stand even if they when you know when they were sitting at home okay their their need has remained the same or their need has increased whereas let us say both our customers as well as us because of the lockdown because we were unable to produce we have not been able to what is called fully respond to our customer you know the final consumers needs who are sitting at home so there is still a, what is called a, a, a pent up demand and that is what you would have you would have experienced our our customers for example when you have, if you have attended the conference call of uh, say dabar or unilever they would have mentioned that a lot of uh, pantry stocking took place in the month of june yeah thank you very much ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint that was the last question for today I will now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So, uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think uh, thank you for your support, and uh, let us meet again uh, three months later. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Galaxy Surfactants Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.